January 21, 2005, paragliding pilot Joe Parr takes off over Mexico's Valle de Bravo, an aerial sports mecca where the powerful thermals soon have him soaring over 3,000 feet in the air. Joe, is it rough up there? The thermals have sharp edges. Joe's helmet cam records the moment when, without warning, one of these swiftly rising columns of air unleashes a near lethal surge. I flew my glider directly into one of these thermals. It's like a wall of air going up. Without a moment to lose, Joe goes for his reserve chute. I'm coming down on the reserve. Looks like I'm going to hit a tree, though. OK, I'm hanging in a tree about 50 feet up. Joe is safe, but not for long. Whoa! Pilots from all over the world who dare to paraglide over the Valley of the Brave know that the thermals here can send them soaring or plunging to the ground. There are several dozen pilots had flown through that exact spot just minutes ahead of me and didn't have a problem because the thermals are always changing. You never know how you're going to hit it. You know, it's rough up there. Keeping in radio contact from the ground, Joe's instructor, Mark Chirico, knows the valley's airborne hazards firsthand. Um, the day that Joe Parr had his incident, Valle was being Valle, and it was sending up those rockets of air. It became evident that Joe was in serious trouble. And at that point, the glider collapses. Mark sees Joe has only one option left. I could tell this was the moment. Throw your reserve, Joe. I'm going down on the reserve. Joe can only fall towards the earth and brace for the impending impact. Boy, that's a little more exciting than I bar bargained for. I was just nervous. I fully expected to be in the tree for hours waiting for my friends to find me. Joe hangs perilously from his paraglider wing, hoping it holds out until help arrives. Our whole crew was in radio contact before I hit the ground. Everyone I knew was aware of my situation and were doing everything they could to take care of me. Uh, in general, where are you? I'm directly behind the launch. There's a field of probably 100 yards from me. Whoa! no signal to me that it was going to happen. It just went boom. All of a sudden, it broke loose. I'm on the ground now. Moment. I'm OK. I've got uh, four strong boys here to help me dig myself out. After crash landing in a tree and falling 50 feet to the ground, Joe is helped to his feet by local residents. Good to see you, Joe. <laughs> Remarkably, he has no significant injuries. The people there were so delighted and, and surprised to think that I was just standing there. I wasn't hurt in, in the least. Good to be here. Good, Good to, to be here. here. Glad to see you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thermals are what paraglider pilots live for and sometimes die from. Paragliding instructor Rob McKenzie has been taming these airborne giants for over 30 years. I'm going to pull it up. If you try to fly a paraglider in uh, strong turbulence, it can uh, quickly become the most dangerous aircraft ever invented. And the thermals at Via de Bravo are among the most turbulent in the world. Rising at lift rates up to 3,000 feet a minute, these violent gusts are five times faster than an elevator. Because there are people that go to this place in the world and they don't go home. Joe is caught off guard. There's an edge of where the thermal is changing from up to down, and it's the sudden changes that this turbulence uh, can affect the paraglider adversely. Rob feels that Joe's accident must have occurred at one of these critical mid-air transitions and looks for clues in the video. You know, is it rough up there? The thermals have sharp edges. If you have sharp edged thermals, you are more likely to encounter trouble. When Joe enters the sharp edge of the thermal, his wing is blown behind him. To prevent a life-threatening stall, he hits the brakes. 
which lowers his nose and sends him into a severe spiral dive. The G-forces that he's feeling could be two, three, four Gs. The faster the spiral goes, the more difficult it is to get out of it. In fact, these extreme G-forces could prevent Joe from pulling his reserve in time. But the very thermal that causes Joe's emergency also saves his life. By lifting him thousands of feet, it buys him life-saving seconds for a safe deployment. If Joe were 400 feet from the ground, he would be in much bigger trouble than he is right now. He's got a lot of altitude, and it probably saved his life. Even with enough altitude, for Joe, survival means finding a safe landing zone. If you're descending really fast, one advantage to trees is that the bending and breaking of branches will be slowing your descent. Once at rest in the trees, Joe still has a long way to drop. He's dangling 50 feet in the air, dangling from just a few of his lines. All he's got left are whatever branches that these lines and the material happen to catch as he goes to the ground. In the end, the wing created enough drag on the branches to bring him safely to the ground. So it's quite possible that it would break your fall, and it could mean the difference between life and death. It was a long fall. It was shredding my glider all the way down. So I sacrificed my glider for soft landing. Worked pretty well. If there's a lasting effect from this event, and probably a little more cautious. <laughs> so I'm a little more risk averse, but I still love what I do.